Most people in America are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return with having. Some people are recognizing that we're heading towards Halloween. And as we head towards Halloween, there's a lot of opportunities for you to work on your faith. Faith is the first primary foundation of the eight infinite areas of happiness, or life balance, as I like to say. And openly, it is the foundation of America. Your individual faith is what speaks to your soul as the Lord made you. And openly, if you're profound in your faith, then you have a strong sense of God. You also know what is and isn't lawful under the Lord's rules. The Lord's rules are pretty straightforward. They're pretty easygoing and, well, they're listed in the Bible. And we know them as the Ten Commandments, but they have to be a little bit adjusted today in terms of that concept of thou shall not kill. Now, we all know that there are gang wars. We all know there are the Hatfields versus McClans. And we also know that in families, there is major dysfunction. And that major dysfunction harms people. It usually harms an individual in a family where everybody gangs up and pounces. And that, under those rules of the house of God or the house rules, is immoral. You see, God says thou shall not kill, but he is not only meaning in terms of murdering someone in cold blood and in premeditation, but what he's talking about is murdering the soul. You see, the soul is what has to be served through its lifetime. And the soul is what's served with lessons and loves and legacy. Now, if you don't understand what I mean, it's that we all come from someone, but we also have a place to go and we also depart and we leave a legacy. What is your legacy of your lifetime going to be? Who are the people in your life that are going to end up in misery because you're gone? I know that in my lifetime, I've had significant women who have impacted my life. But I also know that people can taint them, change them, and make them have strife. And that's not wise. When I talk about these things, I'm talking about the truth of families. The truth of families can be healthily portrayed in, if you can believe it, the Kardashians. But openly, there's also, of course, the fact of television. So, as you know, some of it is tiring and some of it is fake. But truthfully, they're not obligated to give you every secret of their life, and neither am I. Neither are you. But family is the second foundation of life balance. Because we all need that core group of people that love us, care for us, support us, and help us to grow and go in the direction that God truly wants us to go. I know that by nature, and I've been told this by my spirit guides and my angels that I literally listen to in my version of God and the Holy Ghost that the Lord has promised us absolutely in many chapters of the Bible and other works on the Lord, but predominantly in the book of John, chapter 10, The Good Shepherd. And what I'm talking about is whether or not you're listening to God. So I know that by nature I'm a trainer. I absolutely know that throughout my life I have felt somewhat evangelical in my pursuit of talking about God and trying to set people straight, not in rebuke, but in concept of the Lord. That if the Lord didn't want something made, he wouldn't make it anymore. You see, God has the right to make things every day, but society only evolves at a certain rate in terms of its concepts and its understanding of God. And many pastors think they know God, but they may not really know God. They might be great preachers, or they could be great teachers, or they could be super mentors, or they might be great trainers of people, but very few are good trainers of men. Men today are suffering on many sides of the equation of being male today. Because when you're male, you get beat up all the time verbally by women today. You also get solicited inappropriately by women today on many levels. Either they just throw out that, hey, I'm married, and you're like, I didn't ask you, wasn't asking, wasn't flirting, wasn't trying, and you get improved upon by nothing in the conversation. At the same time, we get beaten down by women today by our interest in, well, intimacy and sex and other relations that are part of being male and a part of our hormone stint. But openly, that's the truth. In life, as in the world today, we have rights to do who we are in every way. And we have people on all areas of the spectrum, not only intelligence and education, but also in our faith. 
So what is the level of your faith today and how well is your life going today? Because if your life is living in poverty or just above the poverty line, we might question whether or not you have a sound faith. But at the same time, I know people of profound faith in many religions that are just living in poverty. Now the whole concept of being a priest is one of those vows. In other words, poverty is one of the three vows of priesthood. Chastity is another, and it just depends on where that goes in terms of the type of religion you have. Thankfully, my religion allows me to be married. But at the present time, I can practice chastity for my life, provided that people don't try to touch me in the night without my consent, or someone hasn't programmed me to try to be touched without the being knowledge of that. And that is immoral, and God will kill for that. The other aspect of our concepts of faith belong to us individually. Your faith in your version of God is your faith, but if you're not practicing your faith, if you're not deep in the Word, if you're not reading other books on God, if you're not going to church, if you're not worshiping in fellowship, if you're not singing to God, if you're not dancing before the Lord, then I don't know what to tell you about your life. Because faith is always the foundation of a balanced life. And an imbalanced life gets caught up in vanity, gets caught up in vices, gets caught up in violence, gets caught up in vendetta, and openly, there are people we might love to revenge against who've been harming us, but if we don't know who they are, then we have to leave that revenge to God. And God tells you that very clearly, that He handles those things, and I believe it today. In everything I've done, and everything I've seen, and everything about my metaphysical, is what I like to call it at times, or a more spiritual faith, I can tell you God knows where everyone is, where everything is, and what's going to happen in every way. Despite the fact that people love to be in power today, and the angels around us just have to work harder when we screw up and we fuck up and we don't listen to God.